Et de l'image, nous rendons compte. Tonight, in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television, we will visit the chaotic atmosphere in Velo, Boyo Division of the Northwest region of Cameroon yesterday, boy that was shot dead during exchange of gunshots between security forces and some yet to be identified armed civilians. In this newscast, we bring to you images of how uh, local inhabitants in Belo were now seeking refuge in Bingo, that is still in the Northwest region of Cameroon. Also in this newscast, Barista Agbobala condemns burning of houses in the two wonderful regions of, of the country, attributed what has been unfolding in some localities like Papua to the activities of security forces. In this newscast, we get his reaction shortly after he met with the U.S. ambassador that was in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, a few days ago. Plus, we also talk about uh, the senatorial election, how the Social Democratic Front received news of their victory in the northwest region of the country, visit uh, the northwest region of Cameroon to get the reaction of some senators in that part of the country. Those are headlines. We shall be right back. Stay with us. Tonight, we thank you so much. Good evening to you once again, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Shortly after the proclamation of the senator election results by the Constitutional Council in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, yesterday there was an explosion of joy and celebration in the northwest region of the country within the ranks of the principal opposition party in Cameroon, the Social Democratic Front, the party of Nijan Fundi grabbed all the seven seats in the entire region. Our correspondents, Ingini Edmond and Bo Stella, captured the pictures of celebrations at the home of one of the senators elect and the reactions as well as the expectations of some inhabitants in the northwest region of Cameroon. Babila Jonathan has the details in the following report. Relatives, friends, and comrades of Senator elect Nkezi Emilia celebrate her victory and, by extension, the confirmation of the supremacy of the Social Democratic Front in its stronghold, the Northwest region of Cameroon. Though the Social Democratic Front, STF, got just a meager percentage of the 70 seat Upper House of Parliament, Obtaining all the seven seats in the Northwest region is a landslide and historic victory in the crisis-stricken region. It's the first time that in the Northwest region, uh, the population will accept that uh, Elecam had started work just equally like uh, the, the Constitutional Council. I can always congratulate the SDF for winning in, in the Northwest something they themselves expected. After victory comes time for work, for the well-being of the nation and her people. Our problem is not going to change Cameroon as a whole. Our problem is going to ignite the change which has been laid dormant and docile over time. And I know, as well as you, the journalists, you know that we need time to change this country. And Rome was not built in a, in a single day. The people are expecting concrete results. They should take their job seriously and try to correct some of the mistakes that maybe the first, uh, the first uh, match uh, made. A lot is being expected. You should know there is the Anglophone problem that is so much awaited. And in all of these, those who have been elected presently into Senate should look up towards building a Cameroon that should fit the generations that are coming up today. We should remember the constituency at Roma and give the people who are councillors. Senator elect Nkese Emilia and the others elected March 25th are determined to respond adequately to the people's expectations. In relative terms, I am going to create an impact for the people that I represent. And that said, since I'm the least leader, I will definitely be having meetings upon meetings with the other six of my people to make sure they create an impact 
on the people that they represent. They will begin work later this month after the appointment of the other 30 senators by the President of the Republic, Paul Bia, to complete the House. <laughs> And on to something else, Eta Mbokaya Ashu is the new senior divisional officer for Libya Lem in the southwest region of the country, replaces Zachary Ongito, that had been senior divisional officer for Libya Lem in the southwest region of the country for several years now. It is contained in the presidential decree that was made public this evening, and uh, the new SDO von Diang is now the secretary general of the southwest governor's office who is now the former Secretary General of the Southwest Governor's Office, Mr. Fowang Lawrence. We, of course, will be telling you more on that in our subsequent newscast. Now, workers of the African Center for Research on Banana and Plantation in Jombe of the Mongo Division of Cameroon has re have resumed their strike action after they suspended it one month ago. They say that the promises made to them by management of the said company have so far not been fulfilled. The striking workers are demanding nine months of unpaid salaries, as innocent as it tells us in the following report. For the second time, disgruntled workers of the African Center for Research on Banana and Plantain in Jombe, Mungu Division of the Littoral Region mourn their nine months on paid salaries. <laughs> Management has not fulfilled its promise to grant them their rights since they began the strike action over a month now. Today we are suffering because there is nobody to help us. They have ignored management's order to resume work while a solution to their plight slowly but surely comes. The striking workers prefer to put barricades on roads leading to the plantation, assemble consuming palm wine while waiting for authorities to give them a positive news payment of their accumulated salaries. <laughs> Arrival of the Secretary General in the Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation to come to like terms with them proved fruitless. We are coming over salaries. We don't have too much of problems because we should to be with a, a father of children in the house. Have no salaries. You can't. You, you are not fit to pay your, your husband. You are not fit to pay your, your children to school. You are not fit to fit in the house. Agreed to workers say they are being exploited and neglected. The foreign countries, the members are here. You go there and you can see their flags. They are there, but they are not giving five funds because they are not the one controlling. Striking workers have maintained they will not resume work unless their nine months' salaries have been paid. <laughs> That is innocent as uh, the reporting and inhabitants of Deido in neighborhood here in the economic capital Dwell are still suffering from the impact of constant power cuts. The complaint yesterday that they have been for 10 days now without electricity. They actually stormed the head office of the electricity distributing company to demand for the reinstatement of uh, electricity in the set locality. They demonstrated and they were indicating that for the past 10 days they have been in the dark. We now talk about something else precisely, some structures that have so far been abandoned in the Mongo division of uh, the uh, Mongo division of the littoral region of Cameroon, one of uh, the stadia that is expected to be hosting local matches in the country that has so far been abandoned by administrative authorities. We take you now to the Mongo division of the country to take a look at uh, one of the stadia in Kong Samba to see how local inhabitants are coping in the wake of the situation. It's been as such for several months now. A reporter, Rabiatu Aliu, tells us more in the following report. The Barasunto Stadium in Konsamba, littoral region, is now a home to vegetation, animals and birds. This stadium, which has become a dumping ground, was in the past an active arena for the renowned Eglu Royal of Menua in the 90s. According to the quarter head, this stadium was highly solicited and visited in the past. Football fans, 
used to fly by plane to attend the football matches. But now the stadium has been abandoned as this inhabitant explains. In an attempt to remedy the preoccupation of these inhabitants, the municipal councillors of the locality in a meeting took measures to rehabilitate the abandoned stadium. According to the mayor of Konsamba, the entire council has approved the rehabilitation of the stadium. He adds that the project will be fully realized. The quarter head on his part appreciates effort being made by council authorities once again to give the stadium a befitting look. Roads linking various vicinities in Kongsamba and the said stadium are not motorable. The numerous potholes hinder smooth circulation. Inhabitants in Kongsamba impatiently await the rehabilitation of these social facilities as promised by the council authorities. Yesterday, the Belo subdivision in Boyo of the northwest region of the country was in chaos. Security forces were exchanging gunshots with some unknown armed civilians. At least one person was shot dead and others injured, though the exact number of casualties is yet to be made public. Scores of frightened villagers who escaped were seeking refuge at the Mbingo Baptist Hospital at the Mbingo Hospital, vehicles and motorbikes were on standstill. The Mbingo Bamboo Highway was equally blocked purportedly by security forces and persons coming or going out of the area had to undergo systematic checks uh, by forces of law and order and on easy Kamna rains in Belo, though some villagers are still seeking refuge in bushes as a result of the tense atmosphere in that part of the Boyo Division, northwest region of the country. As we announced in the headlines, the executive director and founder of the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa, Barista Agbobala, has stated that the burning of houses in some localities in the northwest and southwest regions of the country is a war crime. Happenings in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon were at the center of discussion as the former president of the Outlawed Consortium in Cameroon, opposition leaders and Christian Cardinal Tomi recently met with the United States ambassador to Cameroon that was in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. Derek Jato had an exclusive interview with Barista Akbobala and compiled the following report. Barrister Agbo Bala returns to Boya after meeting Mr. Peter Henry Ballerin, the United States of America ambassador to Cameroon. He was convened by the U.S. ambassador and he held at the residence of the U.S. ambassador. He had as in attendance uh, Christian Cardinal Tony, uh, Professor Maurice Cantu, who is um, leader of a political party. It had uh, Mr. Gregoire Wona, who is the Deputy Secretary General of the Ruling CPM Party and the Minister of Labour. It had um, the head of the National Human Rights Commission, Dr. Banda. It equally had in attendance a representative of the head of the Islamic community. It also in attendance was Madam Maximilian Go of um, Redak Human Rights Organization. He also had um, Dr. Elizabeth Tamanjong. Uh, former Secretary General of the Social Democratic Front, and my humble self, who was invited in my capacity as the Executive Director and the founder of the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa, um, a non-governmental organization which has been at the forefront of documenting the human rights violations taking place in the, 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 the country since the beginning of the Anglophone struggle. And on the table was the Anglophone crisis. But it's the Agbo Balato like in Ox television, the contribution of personalities like Christian Cardinal Tome. Yes, he, he was not happy with what, what was going on. I mean, he recounted um, um, the situation in Kumbo. He visited at, uh, I think last week, but he found it very appalling. He complained about the, the human rights violations which were going on. He recounted a story where someone who had a bar, the, I mean, the, the, the army, the drunk, I mean, they, they virtually looked everything they took, I think, 500,000 from the guy. And Minister Gregoire Owona. 
and it too was he, he too was appealing for, for 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 us to have a truce and also for us to have a veritable dialogue. As someone who has been on the ground, Barista Agubala revealed what he told the United States of America ambassador to Cameroon. I raised the, raise the issue of Papua in, in particular, and um, arguing that this, we, we condemn the killing of gendarmes. Nobody, nobody supports the killing of the forces of law and order. But then, you cannot burn an entire village because a few people or a group of persons attack, kill the gendarme. You can try to identify those who are involved and arrest them. But when you burn an entire village, it's clearly a pattern, not only in Kwaka, in Bolemba, Kongo, in Kongone, and in many other villages. In, in Guti also, um, villages were completely burned. We had the, the, I raised the issue of, of Kembo. This is clearly what in international law we can terrorize the civilian population. And it's a war crime. And that his effort severally to know about Mr. Ayutabe Julius and others ended up in vain. Well, I, I, I raised the issue of the, of, of the detention of Mr. Julius and Kuhl. That it's not possible for 47 um, um, Cameroonians to be brought in the country, you know, after they were extradited in, in, in Nigeria, without allowing them to have access to their lawyers and to their family. I myself and a few lawyers, uh, by Mr. Claude Asira and Yolan and Dokas, we've gone there twice. We've gone, we've gone, we've gone to set, set with the general headquarters where they are supposedly detained. Nobody has given us access to them. They are supposed he also briefed the U.S. diplomat on the Anglophone detainees and the killings in the North, West and South West regions. Also raised the issue about the detention of close to 400 and, and six persons in, in, at, the, at the central prison in Boga. Barista Agubala also told the United States of America ambassador to Cameroon on the southern Cameroonian refugees in Nigeria. Well, something has to be done. The government is not acknowledging the fact that we have about 40,000 Cameroonians living in Nigeria in, in very um, squalid condition and that there is no meaningful dialogue going on. But I, I, I think that the government has to be serious, you know. The government has to really, really be serious. They might be under extremely what is happening, but like someone who is on the ground, the, the situation is very serious. The situation is extremely tense, you know. So, to me, there is no dialogue. No dialogue is taking place. And it, it cannot just be dialogue of the those in power. It, it should be dialogue where, as I always say, everybody, should be involved. Everybody should be involved in the process. Don't it hold that Washington will not be officially briefed on the state of the Anglophone crisis? But what next? From here. You know, diplomats are diplomats. Probably what we have discussed, they will channel it to its hierarchy. This crisis, called the Anglophone crisis, many say has brought untold hardship, not only to the North, West and South West regions, but to the whole country. Cameroon. And international media organs have reported how the Minister of Communication met unfounded claims on the alleged kidnapping of some 12 tourists in Guti, South West region of Cameroon recently. There are still conflicting views as to whether the Swiss and Italian nationals were captured to some international media organs who spoke to the expatriates. The tourists were never kidnapped. Anglophone activists have equally denied having a hand in the presumed hostage taking but the government has maintained that tourists or terrorists uh, picked up the uh, tourists in the southwest region of the country and were only they were only released after the efforts of elements of the national defense forces we now take a look at the impact of the socio-political crisis rocking the two anglophone regions of the country on economic activities in ECOC a border locality between Cameroon and Nigeria. It is situated in my new division of the southwest region of Cameroon. We spoke to some of the traders and compared the following report. Ekok is one of the busiest transit points for persons doing business between Cameroon and Nigeria. It is situated in the Ayomojok district in my new division, southwest region. Hundreds of persons pass you daily to cross over to Nigeria or travel to Cameroon, a majority of them for business purpose. 
But since the start of the Anglophone crisis, business has been on a standstill. I'm from a cock. I was born here. Ojang Roland owns a food provision store in a cock. He has been in this business for over 40 years now. We make small, small, petty, petty business. But now things need to work out because the crisis we have a country. He told us that things have not been the same again since the Anglophone crisis escalated. Yeah, at first, first time we peace with the country. For business aspect for her. For one day, like for my store, for one day, I feel the sell like 300,000 francs. But now, as for pollution no day, on the time now, I feel sell sometimes 70, 100. He now takes home twice less than the benefit he had months back as a businessman. Activities for her would only do work for from morning time, six o'clock the lock border. The transport sector is also on a standstill. I apply a cock kumba. Kumba a cock. Tashia Bonaventure is a driver along the Kumba a cock highway. If you can see, since morning I'm here. I don't have passenger to go back. Apart from the problem of multiple checkpoints, the number of persons who travel to Ekok has dropped drastically. Drivers say it is a huge blow. At first, I was the thing was very nice. We enjoy the work. We make a lot of money, but now we cannot have that uh, uh, opportunity again anymore because of this uh, anglophone crisis. The thing I've just made. Nothing is going in anymore. People do not travel any longer along the road. You know, sometimes we leave Kumba very early. You, you can take like three passengers before you get at the Kogia, Koko Ramasa. You make Ramasas before you get here. You make a lot of money. But now, along the road, those villages along the road, Wone, all this Konya, there nobody stays there again. Everybody has run, so we don't have. Any more, no more opportunity again. One of the profitable ventures months back in a cock was the hotel business. But dealers in the sector now say that the glory days is history. Approximately three months now. Bame Marcel has been managing one of the most renowned hotels in a cock for 20 years now. The number of persons checking in daily has reduced. In my hotels now, I don't have more customers because now people are afraid to sleep. Some will even come in, stay to sleep here. They will run over to Nigeria's side to sleep there because they think that the places are no more secured anymore. In Ekok, the crippling business environment is general. The rate of employment here has also witnessed a significant drop as a result of the challenges faced by business persons. Another problem raised was that of constant power cut. We we'll get light. Some day we we'll feel, we'll feel get life up like one week. Sometimes it will be like two days they're off. The next day, another day. Money transfer agencies and businesses which survive on electricity are bound to procure generators, which the people also complain is expensive. Like you see, for this my place, I use I spend like forty thousand pounds for one week. What they use? Uh, the request of the population is for the government to provide solutions to the Anglophone crisis before things get out of hand. We pray for peace. I must say, pray for peace. May peace be for country so that meeting the day fine. The, the big man for Cameroon is just for a call for the people for dialogue so that more this problem should be. And then because like now, if this thing continues like this, it can make us to go uh, 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 astray. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Viewers, we thank you so much for joining us. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye and have a blessed weekend.